Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my crafting room. I wanted to give you all a very special thank you um, for your well wishes on the passing of my dad. Um, I do apologize that I haven't been posting as much, um, as many videos as I would like, but I'm sure as you can understand, <laughs> um, grieving. So, and as you all know, grief sucks. So. Um, with that being said, I just want to thank you all for your patience and for your love. But I wanted to give you something special today. So I've been working on this. And I'm going to show you how to make this for May the 4th. So May the 4th be with you. <laughs> this cute little Star Wars bag, tote bag that I have made. And I am loving it. And it has even some scrap pieces that I've put there on the bottom um, just to make it kind of look like the Millennium Falcon <laughs> all banged up. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into this video. Here's everything that you will need to make this Star Wars tote bag. You will also need some scissors, a rotary cutter, a sewing machine. Okay, so here I have my two pieces. I'm sitting at the sewing machine. Um, I'm going to take my 12 inch by 16 inch pieces and some clips. I also have my faux leather piece that will turn into the bottom. And that is the 5 by 16 inch um, piece. You can either use fabric or you can use the faux leather like I'm doing here. Or you can use cork. You can use whatever you have that will um, be your desired outcome for your bag. So... I'm going to just go ahead and start clipping here just to hold the pieces together. This will ensure that the pieces won't move as I'm sewing along. And just take your time doing this so you don't need to really rush through it. And I'm just making sure that that lines up on the edges. And now I'm going to just start sewing straight down. I do a little back stitch when I first start just to kind of hold it into place, but I don't do it when I end um, because it's all going to get sewn in together anyway once you start assembling the whole bag. So I'm just going to continue to sew all the way down and then I am going to cut my threads. Okay, so now I'm going to finger press that seam right there that you see. And I'm going to top stitch. Oh, I'm not going to top stitch. I'm going to put the other piece on first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I have to be mindful of the direction in which I'm placing this fabric because the fabric is directional. If it wasn't directional, it would not matter. But because it is um, it does make a difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and assemble this and then um, I'm going to do the same thing and then we will continue to assemble the bag. Okay, so now I have both of those pieces attached and now I'm going to go ahead and finger press again that seam and then I am going to top stitch all the way down. And what this is going to do is hold that seam in place so it doesn't move. There we go. And that's all you do. Now I'm just leaving mine set at a quarter inch um, and it is catching that seam. If you find that it isn't catching that seam, you may need to adjust your needle and bring it a little bit closer to that seam. And then you will be able to catch that right there. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm also going to go ahead and do that to the other side. And so that's what I will do next. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is cut out a piece of batting. So this is where you'll either use your um, foam, your purse foam, or your batting or any kind of interfacing that you want to use with your tote. I want to use some batting because that's all I have at this moment. Um, 
And as you can see, I did boo boo. I had put on my little purse feet and I put them on way too soon. So those are the four little metal things that you see sticking up. So um, we are not going to do that step today. Um, I didn't really plan that all the way through. And so it was a huge boo boo. <laughs> Don't make that same mistake. Um, anyway, so we're just going to continue on with this bag and I'm just cutting around my batting to make sure that it's going to fit. Um, and it will. And that's all that you need to do is just make sure that you have your batting or your purse foam or whatever cut to the same size that you would like that you're going to have your bag here. All right. So it is now our favorite part and I have started quilting the bag and I am just making lines. Now I did use a ruler to mark them. Um, my lines are two and a half inches wide, I do believe. Um, so right here, I've already made those lines and I am just stitching them down here. And then in a second, you will see that I am going to be using a ruler to make those lines and I will be doing those vertically. Now it's important to mark um, if you want your bag, if you want your lines to be very, very straight. If you don't care and you want your, your lines to be wonky and wavy and that is fine too. Um, you could also quilt this with your embroidery machine. You could um, quilt a design on it or what, whatever you'd like, but I kind of kept mine simple just because um, it's so busy with those comic books on there anyway. And by the way, I am a huge Star Wars fan and I absolutely love this fabric. I am probably going to go buy some more just so I can make more of these really cool tote bags. Um, I also bought some purse foam as well because I want to give that a try and see how that changes the look of the bag as well. So if you would like to see a tutorial on that using the purse foam, then let me know. It's actually not purse foam, it's called flex foam and it's a product by Pellon. I'm just calling it a purse foam because that's what I'm going to be using it for. So if you'd like to see that tutorial, then just go ahead and comment down below in the description box and let me know and I will work on that. So here I am marking with some chalk. Now I normally like to use my um, my pins and because when I iron over them they they the marks come off but for this bag I actually had to bring out the chalk because I couldn't really see my lines and so here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to quilt the um, the lines here just straight down just like we did before. Okay, so our bag is all quilted and now we're going to start attaching our straps. Now I did get these at Joann's. This is called belting. Um, and I just thought that the rainbow kind of went really good with this because I just had that in my stash and that's really all that I had left. <laughs> but I do like the way that it goes with this bag because I think it um, really helps it to pop and it brings out a lot of the colors. So I am going two inches in from the side and I'm going to mark that with my pen. And again, these will come off when you iron over them, but in this case, I don't need to worry about it because you can't see it for one. And not only that, but I'm going to sew over that. It's just being used as a mark. So I'm measuring in, so I'm going in two inches away from the edge, and I'm just making sure that that's even, and it is, and you're going to need some pins for this because you're going to want to go ahead and pin this down, so that's where I'm going to go, and you want to make sure that you have your strap on there um, evenly and correctly. So you, I just use those marks as a kind of a guide and then I place it down just to see how I like it because it was too high up as you could see. And now I'm just moving it along to make sure that 
I am here. And you can see I'm looking for my, my marks. Um, and you can use, you know, something else to, to mark that if you'd like, but um, I just use my friction pins for that. So I'm going to pin that down. And if you do this to one side, you know, you're going to have to do this to the other side. So just pin there. And I'm just making sure everything is nice and even and, you know, good enough. It doesn't always have to be super, super perfect because nothing is ever super perfect. But you do want to check how your straps are laying because you do not want those to be laying wonky because once you put your bag together and sew those on that's how it's going to be all right so i'm just going to smooth that out a little bit and then i'm going to do the same thing and i'm going to measure and then i'm going to attach my straps all right so i have that that uh, strap pinned on and now i'm going to put the bag together and i just want to see how they're going to line up. I want to make sure that my straps are even and if they're laying correctly, do I need to make any adjustments? And it looks like I might need to make some because it looks like one of my straps is higher than the other. And so it's just a small adjustment, but it is definitely one that you would like to take the time to do up front. Um, because like I said, once you put them on, you don't want to have to be messing with them and tearing them out and all of that stuff. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm just checking the straps, making sure that everything looks good. And it looked like both of those needed some adjusting. And so that's all I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm at the sewing machine here and now I'm gonna start attaching our um, straps. And I am just going to sew a square on here with an X. On it to hold it down and you want to take your time with this because you don't want to get carried away and you do want to kind of make sure that your squares are even as you can see I already did one there but this will be the last one that needs to be attached and so um, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here and then our straps will be attached to our bag Okay, so now I have my faux leather piece, which is the one inch um, by 16 inch ribbon, basically. So it's a ribbon, a, a faux leather, or a piece of fabric that you have made into, I don't, it's one inch, two inches, whatever your desired sizing is, you can change this. And so I'm using one inch by 16 inch, and I am just going to put that over those straps down there at the bottom. Not only does this give the bag a really cool look, but it also covers up the raw edges of those um, handles that we have there. And so all we do is just put those down on top. I do clip them to hold them in place because I don't want them to be crooked. So you do want to make sure that they are straight, unless again, you're making a wonky bag and then you can have them any way you would like, which I think might look kind of cool. And then I'm just gonna start sewing that down. And I am using a zigzag stitch on this. And the reason I'm using a zigzag stitch is because I'm working with raw edges on that faux leather and I don't want them to fray. And then also because um, I just like decorative stitch. So this is a good time to use decorative stitch. I've made tote bags where I have actually um, used fabric and I just folded it and used my iron to press it so there were no raw edges. I would put that down on there and then I would use a decorative stitch just because it adds so much character to a bag, I think. But if your machine has other decorative stitches like flowers or stars or anything like that this would be a really good time to use those stitches um, on your bag all right 
So now we are ready to sew our bag together. So I'm going to put my two straps on the inside, just like that. And then I'm going to fold my bag in half. And I'm going to put my raw edges together there. You want your right sides facing each other when you do this. So you should have the ugly side up facing you at this point in time. You're going to take some clips and you're going to clip that. I like to clip the top so that it doesn't move around when I'm sewing. And so that is what I am doing. Just clipping those along to hold everything in place. And if you've sewn everything with the perfect quarter inch seam or half inch seam, whichever you're using, I'm using a quarter, um, then everything will line up perfectly and including the bottom of your bag there. So here I'm going to go ahead and tuck those in again because they came untucked. And I'm just going to repeat the same process and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so we have everything clipped and ready to go. And now I'm just going to stick it under the machine and I am just going to start sewing. We're only going to sew down the two sides. So we're going to sew down this side and we're going to sew down the other side that has the clips on it as well. Okay, so we are moving right along and now we're going to take our lining piece and we are going to start assembling that. That piece should be about 29 inches by 16. So 29 inches long by 16 inches wide. And so I'm just going to go ahead and clip those really, really easy. And we're just going to do again. We're going to sew down the two sides, but we are going to leave an opening on one of these sides. So I usually like to leave about the size of my fist, really, um, maybe a little bigger, but this, we leave this open because what happens is when we go to put the bag together, we will actually pull the bag through that opening. And so that's what we, that's where we'll need to put those, I'm sorry, that's where we'll need to leave that open so that we can turn the bag. Okay, so now I'm going to just go ahead and start sewing. So this is where I'm going to leave the opening. I'm going to start closer to the bottom where the fold is. And I'm just going to take a couple of stitches and start sewing there. I will back stitch to hold everything in place. Um, I like to hold or back stitch on the lining just because the lining, you know, gets kind of used a lot. So we don't want anything coming undone with the lining. So that's what we do there. And then I'm going to keep going and then I'm going to back stitch there. And then I'm going to move up a little bit more. So you can see right there, that's how I created that opening to where we're going to turn our bag through that. Then on the other side, I will sew all the way down. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the lining inside out. So what you want to do is you want to have your two pieces when you go to do them. I'm going to poke out my corners real quick here. And I'm just using um, one of those little turning tools, but you can use, a, <clears throat> excuse me, a chopstick, a turning tool, a pen, anything that you would like. But you want to be careful not to poke a hole when you're doing that because it's very easy to do. So be gentle when doing it when doing that, poking out your corners. You're going to need some clips and you're going to put your lining inside of your bag, right sides facing each other. 
Now, don't be worried about those handles that are in there. You're just going to put that lining right on top of that. And everything is going to be in there and everything is going to work out. Now, you want to make sure that your seams are going to line up. So take your seam from your lining and your seam from your bag. And you're going to nest those seams together. And that means you're going to have one seam going to the right and one seam going to the left. You're also going to do that on the other side. You're going to line up those seams. I recommend lining up your seams before lining anything else up. It just makes everything lay so much better and the bag will come together much smoother. So now you're just going to clip the rest of that all the way around and you're going to be doing your raw edge to raw edge. So just continue to clip your bag. And make sure that everything lays nice and flat, nice and even. If you have some um, areas where it's not laying right or it isn't fitting correctly, then it's because your lining is probably a little too big or a little too small. And you might need to make adjustments for that or just make a whole new lining. So it happens. That's why I'm mentioning it, mentioning it because it's happened to me several times. <laughs> you think you've got it going really great and then you find out you don't. It could be a change in um, your seam. It could be a change in, I mean, it could be a n number of things. So just be patient. Okay, now we're going to top stitch. So you're just gonna sew all the way around that bag and attach everything and just pull the, the clips off as you go. Um, I backstitch when I start and that is going to attach our lining to our bag. All right, so here is our moment of truth. We're going to turn our bag inside out and we're going to pull the bag through that hole and just take your time when you reach in there to grab that because it can be a little bit tedious you're working with a lot of layers and the layers are pretty thick depending on what product you used um, for your bag if you used foam it's going to be a lot thicker than the batting um, but nevertheless you're still going to have many thick layers and so now our bag is turned inside out and you can see how it's taking shape there so I'm just going to continue to do this and I'm going to poke out my corners there and then I will um, put my lining inside the bag okay so there is my lining I've got my bag and everything prepped and ready to go so now we need to close up the lining and put that in our bag so i'm just making sure that the lining fits properly there and now i'm going to close that that opening that we created for turning the bag and you can hand stitch that or you can machine stitch it i choose to machine stitch mine i just um, use matching thread and i use a very small seam allowance and that's how i do it Okay, so now I have the lining in the bag. I've sewn up the opening and I'm just using my fingers to kind of go around and press the seam down around the top of the bag. And so I am going to top stitch around the top of the bag to hold all those layers in place. And so right now I'm just pressing out the corners as you can see on my bag. Okay, and then making sure that it's going to lay nice and flat there. And then I am going to get my thread and make sure it matches. So I'm going to do black on top and white on the bottom. And then I'm going to just top stitch all the way around that top part. All right, now that our bag is put together, we are going to be putting on rivets to 
hold our straps in place. Now, you can sew these down. I've done this before. This makes it so that your straps are up higher and they're laying flat and they're not flopping all over the place. But I got these new rivets from Cam Snaps. So I have these little mouse head rivets and I just thought they would be perfect for this project. And they are the rainbow colored rivets. And again, um, I got those from camsnaps.com. My pliers are from camsnaps.com. That's a handheld professional press right there. And I just attached it um, onto my handles and it holds it up perfectly. The pink press that you see right there is also a Camp Snap product. Um, that is a professional die press. It is big, it is heavy, and it is fabulous. I use it to poke the holes in um, my bags. They have dies for um, punching holes in fabric and thicker materials. And for also, it works for attaching snaps, it works for attaching all kinds of things. So I just used my handheld for this one though, because I needed to get down a little bit further on that bag and that enables me to go ahead and do that. Now I'm getting ready to put in my magnetic snap. Again, this is a cam snap product. Now look, this is where I'm gonna punch the hole with it. And then I'm gonna have if I can ever get my fabric in there straight. Um, I'm going to have a perfectly punched hole so that I can put my snap in there with absolutely no problem at all. And you can see how many layers. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to put my magnetic snap on and I'm putting my dies into my pliers and I'm just going to screw them in here, making sure that I have the right ones that fit. I'm just finishing up adding that in there, adding the dies. And now I am going to start attaching my magnetic snap. So, grab my snap. I'm going to put the cap. Those are my pliers. I'm going to put the cap side or the snap side inside and then the cap on the outside and I'm going to push on it and you'll hear them snap. You won't hear them snap on this video, but when you're attaching those or installing them, you will hear them snap. And then I'm just going to use my pliers to make sure that that cap head fits in there and the bottom part fits on the bottom die. And then I'm just going to give it a squeeze. And these pliers are awesome because you do not have to press very hard. And if you have arthritis in your hands like I do, or if you have a messed up hand like I do, these are perfect for you. Same with the professional dies. They do all the work for you. So here I'm going to install the other part of the snap. And again, I'm going to put the cap on there and I'm just going to snap it into place. And then I will take my pliers. Now this, I'm gonna change the bottom die. And I just use a little tiny screwdriver to loosen that die and then pop it out. And then I'm gonna put that die in there. And I will just use my little screwdriver to tighten that so that it doesn't move around when I'm pressing. It's really simple. And I apologize for it being out of the view here, but trying to get this on. So we just take that and now we're just going to press. And I will link down below in the description box to the camp snaps. And if you use my code crafty author 10, you'll get a 10% discount on all of your camp snap purchases. Because Judy at camp snaps is awesome. And I love camp snaps. I use camp snaps for everything. Okay, so that is it. So this is the finished product you can see i used rivets to hold those um, handles down and i've used some faux leather and i have sewn little patches on here just because i think it looks super cute 
this is my bag, so I'm not overly worried about it. It does have a magnetic closure. As you can see, I use my cam snaps as I stated in my video. It is fully lined also with the Star Wars fabric. It's adorbs. It's super cute. I am really digging this one, you guys. So that's it for me today. If you'd like to follow me on social media, links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Everything that you need to make this bag will be noted down below in the description box. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, click that little bell. You get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video. If you would like to share, please do so. Sharing is caring and keep on crafting. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.